Hi, I'm Joe Stockdale. Welcome back to the vlog. This is our second vlog on the FEI channel. Um, I hope you enjoyed the, the first vlog and thank you very much for your feedback on that. Today we're going to talk a little bit about our lorries, give you a tour of all our lorries and also talk about how we travel the horses. Right, so we've got three lorries in total, currently sat in our two horse lorry. Um, now the beauty of this lorry is it's fantastic for quick run around, you know, if you've got a horse that needs to go to the vets uh, on its own or if it actually needs to get to the vets quickly rather than get out the bigger lorries, you can quickly nip over in this two horse. Um, obviously as well, if you're going to say a day show um, and you've got a couple of younger ones in, in the very first class and then, you know, like us, we've got then a couple of older horses that are jumping the later classes um, in the evening. It's also fantastic for that. You can quickly nip down in the morning, get those younger ones jumped and then come back and then you've got time then to load up the big truck and then go again in the afternoon. Um, so really, really useful. You don't always want to be taking our massive uh, big HGV out. So to have something like this um, where we can quickly run around, uh, very easy to unpack and pack, uh, makes our life a lot, a lot easier when we're planning shows. Right, so this is the inside of our, our two horse. Um, we actually had this specially made, designed at hybrid horse boxes. And what we did is we had it actually lengthened and widened. So it probably looks small from this angle. Um, they have to go on a sort of twitter and turn as they get up the ramp, but once they're used to it, they travel perfect in here um, and load on and off very, very easily. So in here, just a small little uh, sort of area for our tack. Get your boots on, get ready if you jump in a class at a day show. Um, saddle racks, got a little wardrobe in this side as well, and another seat, which also you can take the lid off. They've got uh, some buckets and extra bits and bobs just in case under there as well. Um, what we actually also had specially made was we made sure that these doors at the back were actually wider than usual. And what that meant was, you know, if the worst came to the worst and you were in an accident or, or whatever, you could actually empty the horses and unload the horses through the back here in a case of emergency. But more than one exit, you know, if there was anything that went wrong, you never know. Um, so we just wanted these wide enough so actually the horses can fit out of here if they needed to. So this is the middle lorry, we call it. Um, so it's our work wagon basically. If we're going to a day show, not taking too many, maybe three, four horses. Um, this is usually what we take, um, as you can see. A little bit dated the inside. Um, it's done plenty of miles, this one, but it is just our work wagon. Um, in the back, nothing splashy, no living in this. Um, it's purely just for traveling the horses. It's got saddle racks and bridle hooks at the front, bit of storage up on that top shelf. So yeah, fantastic lorry. It gets plenty of use. Um, obviously when we're going to our normal national shows and yeah, it does the job fantastically. Not too flash, but uh, doesn't need to be for what it's doing. Right, so now we'll head over, check out my favourite bit of kit on the yard, the big lorry. Right, so this is uh, the driver's seat of the big truck. 
um, you do feel like you're king of the road up here when you sat so high above all the other traffic with uh, that massive length of lorry behind you. Um, so a couple of bits to mention here. We've got our little screen here. What this is, is a camera looks back to the horses in the back. So we've got about three or four different camera angles so that we can check each individual horse um, from different sizes to check they're all okay. There's nothing wrong at the back. You know, obviously if you're driving on your own, you can't send someone back there to check. So so if you're just driving your own, you've got that just to check they're all there. So seeing as we sat in the big lorry, uh, this is obviously the lorry that we do most of our big long journeys. And I thought, of, thought that I would sort of um, talk you through the process of how we get from here to Spain or a big tour that's a long way away like that. So to start off with, we make sure all of our horses have, of course, got an FEI passport. Um, they need that to basically jump internationally as an FEI passport. You can't just have a national passport. You need an international passport for that. Um, and then what we do is we apply for our health papers. The health papers is basically a paper to prove that the horse is fit to travel. Um, what will happen with them is your vet will come, they'll check the horse over, check they're all all right to travel, uh, nothing wrong with them, and then they'll sign you off on that. And basically on your journey, you should have their passports and the health papers on you at all times when you're with the horses. Once you've done that and you've got all their passports sorted, obviously you need to organise uh, your actual journey and your travel. Um, so we have an agent, Shelley Ashman Shipping, and they basically organise either our ferry, which we're going to travel the horses over the channel on, or you can also go on the train. Um, the train's a little bit quicker, but it's a bit more expensive. So if you're doing a bit of a shorter journey, sometimes you go on the ferry because uh, it's actually, it actually makes your journey time not too long for the horses, or if you've got a long way to go in one day, you might go on the train instead. Um, so basically what we do is we book in with either the train or the ferry, we drive down there at our, um, our slots, our time, um, and we get over to the side. Now the way it works in terms of us traveling, we, as like I said earlier, we can't drive for more than four and a half hours at a go. Um, so when we're traveling, me and Charlotte, we usually drive for about four hours, at that point, we'll stop, um, we'll check all the horses, we'll give them a little bit of a break because they don't want to be travelling for too long in one stint. We'll then give them a little bit of hay and water, or a little bit of feed. We don't try and give them too much. We won't give them a full feed like we would do at home or, or say like and let them drink a full bucket of water because a lot of them sort of won't go to the toilet on the lorry. So what that means is they could get there and have a little bit um, of an upset stomach. So what we do is we just give them a little slip of water, check they're all okay, check that uh, they're all traveling fine, not too warm, not too cold, whatever in the back there, um, and just give them a general bit of a break from the drive and then we'll set off again. Um, so we don't try and drive more than eight or a nine hour day in one go because you know, like, you know, obviously you don't want the horses traveling for long periods or being stuck on the lorry. So we try and stop and arrange our intervals as much as we can so that they are in tip top condition when they arrive at the show. So on these long journeys, we usually try and pack as much of our own feed in as well. Um, all of our horses are fed on Spiller's horse feed and we don't want them getting to a show and then suddenly having to change their whole routine and their diet because we haven't taken the feed with us. So luckily in the back there, as I'll show you in a minute, we've got plenty of storage space where we can pack all of our feed in and what that means is we keep that consistency to the horse's diet on the long journey. Once we've done those few bits, uh, we'll sit down and we'll sort of have a look at our journey make a plan for how long each day will take and we sort of work out where we want to be stopping over along the journey. Um, so then we talk to Shelley Ashman Shipping and they get all of that booked in and organised for us um, so that we're not travelling the horses too long one day and then too short the next day. It's all nice and even and just worked out so that the horses have as nice a journey as possible. Right, so... Going from the cab, you walk straight into the living here in the big lorry. Um, the beauty of having a higher cab like that is it means it's a bit of an easier step through into this living. Uh, and a lot of the old lorries where they've got the, the lower down cab, you sort of have to climb up into your living in the back. Whereas this, you just walk straight through. Um, in here, you'll, you'll notice straight away that actually it's a lot smaller and you probably thought they had a really fancy living and really flash, loads of TVs everywhere like you do see uh, in a lot of the, the ads that lorry companies have put up. but. We purely designed this though for practicality. Um, so actually the horses have probably got much more luxury in the back here there than what we would do in the living here. Because um, at the end of the day, that's what's really important is how they travel. Um, so we had the living reduced. We do have a pop out, which is quite lucky. So the side pops up there and also you'll see up there, the bed looks quite high, but what that's on is actually, it's on lead, uh, pulleys. So we'll fold the driver and the passenger seat down. 
and then you can drop that bed down so it's lower so it ends up at a normal height down the bottom there. Um, and then we can also turn this sofa here into a bed as well if we did have two of us sleeping here at one time. Uh, the toilet's through that door into the back there. Um, I'll show you that in a minute. And then we've just got all the normal stuff, cupboards and storage, little TV up here, wardrobe, fridge, and then a microwave and a few cooking rings at the top there. Um, so pretty simple, nothing too flashy, no champagne cabinets like you see in a couple of lorries, um, but purely made for the function of it and it works perfectly when we're at show. So moving through into the back here, uh, at the top here we've actually got this storage above the bathroom. At the minute there's a few fans up there that we took to Spain. Um, we like to put fans in their stables if it's going to be really hot, keep them cool, uh, make sure they're not sweating in their stable or getting too tired out just standing there in the day. And then here we've just got our small bathroom. Like I say, everything about the store is made for practicality. So not a big flashy bathroom in here. It's got a shower, toilet, all the bits and bobs you need, but nothing extra, sort of wasting space in the back. So moving through into the back, this is the bit that I'm really interested in. I'm not too worried about the living or the bathroom. Actually, the bit where the horses are is by far the most important bit about the lorry. Um, we've had this fully kitted out to make it as comfortable as for the horse as possible. Um, so for example, we've got padding on, each, either side, about which pad around each side of all of the partitions. Um, we also had a special bit of padding put at the back. You know, a few of the horses as they're traveling like to sort of lean in on the back of the wall. Um, so we had that put as nice smooth leather um, with padding inside to make it nice and soft. Uh, the main thing really to note uh, in the back here is how sturdy everything is. And you can see all the partitions, no matter how much you pull or push them, they stay exactly where they are. So what it means is if, if there's a horse, it's maybe not a great traveler leaning one side or the other. This holds them up and makes sure that they're not falling uh, through into the horse next to them, basically. Um, also in the back here, so we've got windows, big windows all the way along the front, currently covered by these strong headboards at the front. And then we also have a set of windows at the back as well. Um, what it means is if we're traveling and it's a really hot country, we can open all those up, uh, get plenty of air through into the back here, make sure all the horses are comfortable. Also at the top, we've got fans all the way along. So if you're on the ferry or on the train, you can flip the fans on, make sure they're still getting fresh air, even if you can't uh, you know, get fresh air through the side windows, that, that'll be on um, flushing air through. And then we've got two skylights as well, um, so they can be opened all the way up. Again, just get as much fresh air in here as possible, make sure they're not getting hot or bothered in here. Um, or even if you parked up at a day show, um, they're stood in here, but they're gonna be pl plenty comfortable. Uh, loads of air, not so nice and cool, not getting too hot and sweaty in here. Uh, also to note, so we've got a big uh, rug rack at the back there. We also have those uh, screens which fold down, make sure that nothing falls off the back there onto the horses while they're traveling. Um, so these screens pull down on these pulleys here, like you can see. Um, also something to note is we have a winch at the top there. So the winch is for basically just our trunk. Um, our trunk is so heavy uh, when we're at show and it's fully packed through the tack and what have you. Um, that it's actually so difficult to push push up the ramp sometimes, especially if you're on your own, you know it's not a chance. So say Charlotte was at a show on her own, she's got the winch there so she can get the trunk up if needs be. Um, so usually on this big lorry, uh, it can take eight horses, we never normally travel more than seven, um, just so they can have a bit of extra space, you know, all of ours, they're all set up in big wide spaces so they've got plenty of room, you know, if they need to lean one side or the other, they can actually move and they don't feel panicked in their spot. Don't worry, this isn't a space here, this nice narrow one. This is just for a bit of storage, me a bit of feed and, and shavings and things went down here when we were traveling to Spain. Um, and then also, talking about feed, across here we have our feed bins in the front. Um, so these are really fantastic. It means that when we're going to a show, like I mentioned earlier, we can take all our own feed with us. Um, we don't have to borrow feed when we're there. We don't have to change any of their diets because we can fit it all in here in the front. Um, also, this is really handy because if we're on the ferry or on the train or wherever it is, a little stop and let them have a bit of a rest. Because they can have a bit of food up here, they can have a small feed and they can rest it on there and they can eat it off there as well. So we've got a full set of lockings down both sides of the lorry, um, just purely to give us a bit of extra storage. Uh, so this is probably our biggest locker. This actually goes all the way through to the other side. So it goes all the way underneath the lorry, underneath the living, um, all the way through to the other side. Uh, and it's basically got, so in there at the minute, it's got all of our chair seats, buckets, water buckets. Also we've got our fridge in there. Um, so freezer, sorry. So we take our freezer to 
all our international stay away shows. Uh, what it means is that obviously if horses are jumping on consecutive days, we can get the ice boots in there. And that means when they come out of the ring and they are in the stable, they have some ice boots on, help with their recovery, uh, a bit of blood flow to those muscles as well when you take the ice boots off and just basically help them recover as best they can for the next day of jumping. So we go further back now, this is our tap trunk, our tap locker in the lorry. Um, so obviously we've got enough four saddles there and plenty of bridles and head collars across the top there, as well as take our grooming kits and all the other bits and bobs. Whatever we can really, we'll fit in there, uh, all of our CWD tack, um, we'll shove in there and obviously take with us, as well as usually it's packed, packed to the brim um, of other stuff as well, trying to fit as much in as we can wherever we're going away to a chef. Um, so we've also got the door at the back here, um, just basically easier access, so if we've got a full set of horses on here, we can easily open up this door, check all the ones in the back half as well, without having to climb through or past the ones at the front. And basically around on this side, uh, a similar set, we've got slightly smaller tap lockers, uh, so we've got a generator and other bits and bobs in one, uh, and then down there is the other side of the big tap locker that I mentioned earlier, which has got the majority of our stuff sat underneath the living. Right, so thank you very much for watching this vlog. Hope it gave you a bit of an insight to our, our lorries. Uh, make sure you subscribe to the FEI channel and comment on what you want us to do next time.